Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. Mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Well, it's last Monday in June, so it's to poem. And uh, here's a beautiful one by Rumi. It's called The Pilgrimage to a Person. <clears throat> when you are not with close friends, you are not in the presence. It is sad to leave the people you travel with, how much more so those who remind you of God. On every trip, have only one objective, to meet those who are friends inside the presence. If you stay home, keep the same purpose, to meet the innermost presence as it lives in people. Be a pilgrim to the Kaaba inside a human being, and Mecca will rise into view on its own. I love that line. So if you're not traveling, meet the innermost presence as it lives in other people. Love that. All right, I said we would have review four paths of creation-oriented spirituality as laid out by Meister Eckhart from the tw uh, 1200s. Um, the via positiva, via negativa, via creativa, via transformativa. I don't think we have to talk that much about the via positiva because it re represents the delight, the wonder, the awe, the celebratory aspect, the, the cosmic breath. And I don't mean breath like nostril breath, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, the width of our living relationship to everything from the stars to the subatomic particles. Uh, and of course, all of us want to think of spirit as the exalting thing, the thing that lifts you up, makes you see far, gives you fire for, for life, passion for existence, zest, uh, elan, all that kind of stuff. No need to talk about that. We all understand that. It's the other three paths that I think we need more depth, refinement, and involvement and with clarity until these all become integrated. So the via negativa, the path of silence, of letting go, letting be, which humor of court is a part, court, of course is a part of, you have to let go of the perspective to allow the non sequitur or the satire or the, the parody to come through. But uh, this is also the, the path, of course, of suffering and grief. Uh, everybody gets wounded. You have to learn to pay attention to that. And so this is where you become friends with the dark. The positive, you befriend creation and the positive say, but here's where you, you open the search to the divine depth. Sometimes God is called a super essential darkness. It's um, sinking into that. Like Meister Eckhart says, God isn't found by adding anything, but by the process of subtraction. And um, the Grand Canyon has nothing on the human being who's uh, been even more deeply carved over thousands of years through the flowing tides of pain. But it's interesting that so much of our life takes place in the dark. We're, we're growing the womb in the dark. Our heart is beating in the dark. Uh, all things in our body go on their daily business. It's all in the dark. Um, so make peace with the dark and even befriend it. And uh, maybe we can see the darkness as a kind of holy origin, mm -hmm. sacred origin, and not just the path of light. So silence also means letting go of all images, not just not talking. So it doesn't have to be auditory or visual or cognitive. Um, darkness is a language in itself. There's an endarkenment as well as there's an enlightenment. And so if we deny it, if we repress it, if we ignore it, we will become victims in a certain way instead of the healers that we could become. So does it, do we need courage to face it? Absolutely, but we don't want to glorify our pain or wallow in it. We just enter into it and see that we're strong enough and capable and creative enough to move through it. And that's where the via creativa comes in. You take the positive and negative images that come from the first two paths and you let it flow out. Do you have to bottom out first before um, you get into this? Not necessarily, but for a lot of people, that's what happens. After emptying out, creativity flows. Nature abhors a vacuum. Empty out and something will come in to fill it. So the divine image in us gives birth all day long. God sits on a maternity bed for eternity, constantly making everything new. So honor this capacity for birthing. Just think about the amount of sperm and eggs that human beings have. You realize it's unlimited what we can actually create, but not just with human beings. 
So we name things, we unname things, and our fruitfulness is like an orchard. So every human being is endowed with this power and capacity to birth. And it's essential if we're going to redeem ourselves from the negative things that we've created up to this point in history. So uh, it's an ongoing process. We could say cosmogenesis, creating a new world, a new world order. And then uh, you have to trust in the affirmation. If I let go, things will happen. That's an affirmation. And then ultimately, of course, leads to the via, transfer team, uh, via transformativa. There is no peace without justice. We have to include everyone. We have to make it good for everyone. It may seem like an ideal, the, the omega to the alpha, that's still far off in the future, but it begins always in this moment with whatever you can do. So this is where you find compassion because you cannot pick one thing out from everything else. It's hitched to everything else and interconnectivity, interaccommodation. And so uh, staying awake is seeing a recognition of this, how the whole penetrates all the parts. So once you realize that the, the soul is not in the body, it's not puny, it's made for something greater, the body is in the soul. And the soul demands fulfillment for a spiritual journey. But the soul part is the part that takes you into the depths, whereas the spirit part takes you into the heights. And ultimately, you have to make a continuum. So don't be lazy. Work on yourself. If you, if you feel that the social inertia is not benevolent enough for you, get on the front lines and work in some way that you feel is appropriate for yourself. And uh, everybody has a prophet in them, the need to recognize the, uh, the work of the spirit in, in the dimension of peace and justice. Wednesday is our next Good for Vibrate, Good, Good Vibrations class on yoga and universality. Come and join us. Go to gabrielhalpern.com website, sign up, and we'll see you again in a little bit.